दोस्तों पत्र सूचना कार्यालय के ओर से मैं आप सभी का इस प्रेस वार्ता में हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं इस माय प्रिविलेज एंड ऑनर टू इंट्रोड्यूस द मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट इंडिपेंडेंट चार्ज फॉर कॉमर्स इंडस्ट्री फाइनेंस एंड कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारमन जी आई एक्सटेंड अ वार्म वेलकम टू यू मैम I also welcome Commerce Secretary Sri Rajiv Kher. Uh, today's press conference will begin with a short film. Thereafter, the Commerce Secretary will make his opening remarks. After which, the Honourable Minister will make introductory remarks. Then the forum is open for questions and answers. As usual, my dear friends, please ask the questions one by one. and before asking please state your name and your organization i also request you to kindly switch off your mobiles or keep them on silent mode now the film will start please roll it out switch off the light please the unfolding vision of a focused and determined leadership has begun transforming the way india conducts business trade and commerce and the way global peers perceive us on the 16th of may india's 600 million voters delivered a historic and decisive mandate for change the new government led by prime minister shri narendra modi took over decisiveness dynamism simplicity transparency and speed in execution became the cornerstones of governance over the past days we have successfully begun bringing down barriers between our citizens and opportunities we are working to ensure ease of doing trans border trade india's exports registered a growth of 14.23% in rupee terms between april to july of this year compared to the same period last year we aspire for excellence in our products and services and aim at zero defect and become a net exporter of goods engineering pharmaceuticals automobiles and textiles have been the front runners leading the charge There is a focus on diversification of services exports with emphasis on tourism, healthcare and professional services. Exports from the defense sector will receive a boost through the modified FDI policy. Exports and operations in both manufacturing and services are being optimized. All processes are being digitized for improved efficiency. Matters relating to MAT, DDT, tax holidays, service tax Dual use of infrastructure and simplified customs procedures have been prioritized for action. SEZs are the future of plan development, offering multiple opportunities for growth and employment. Sector-specific branding campaigns are being planned in pharmaceuticals, plantation commodities, engineering, and services, in which India has historical strengths. The Department of Commerce is taking measures to ensure that all states work cohesively. New initiatives to enhance exports are being received with much enthusiasm by the states. State governments have been urged to develop export strategies and oversee the mainstream of their states and also appoint export commissioners. An e-procurement program to cover all states is being set up. Global business today calls for increasing collaboration between nations and economies. India is forging stronger relationships without immediate neighbors by underscoring the importance of utilizing FTAs and pursuing preferential trade agreements with Latin America, Africa and the CIS region to broad-based trading operations. Special emphasis is being laid on trade with South Asian countries. In order to directly help farmers of plantation crops, the government has developed an insurance-based scheme for price assurance for tea, coffee, rubber and spices. A saffron production and export development agency is being set up and will have its headquarters in Jammu and Kashmir. All commodity boards are being reorganized to become dynamic and citizen-centric. 
The Indian Institute of Packaging is being transformed into a global center of excellence. Several measures are being taken to augment the production and export of tea. Our government is very keen to deepen India's engagement with the world, but only on terms that do not in any way compromise our commitment to our own citizens. It is important for developing countries to be able to guarantee some minimum returns to their poor farmers so that they are able to produce enough for themselves and for domestic food security. Our pro-farmer stand at WTO is aimed at ensuring food security for large sections of our population and working towards a permanent solution to the issue of public stock holding of food. Our stand has found resonance amongst the poor and developing countries and is helping forge new global partnerships. Decisive, dynamic, transparent, determined and responsible. These first days have offered but a glimpse of the transformation ahead. The soon to be announced foreign trade policy aims at long term stability of the policy framework. The Department of Commerce commits itself to finding new ways of catalyzing trade and economic activity between India and the world and ushering in a new era of prosperity. The Department of Commerce ushering in a new future. I request the Commerce Secretary to make his opening remarks. Honorable Commerce and Industry Minister, friends from the media, colleagues, uh, let me first welcome Honorable Minister and uh, friends from media for <clears throat> this press interaction, where we propose to give you a very brief sense of whatever little achievements we have been able to showcase uh, within the last three months, but more importantly, what we propose to do over the next uh, days and months. Department of Commerce, as you all know, is a front-end department in the overall economic governance paradigm of the country. What Dep Department of Commerce does is essentially on the basis of what the back end of the economy does. And therefore, there has to be a synergy between the action taken by the Department of Commerce and the rest of the departments in the government. Realizing this, uh, our action agenda is uh, built on an architecture which tries to look at the manner in which businesses need to be facilitated for improving our export performance and the manner in which we need to uh, intervene in our institutional governance and institutional development to facilitate a seamless trading ecosystem. Keeping this in mind, uh, our action point, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few thoughts that we have also give you a sense of whatever little achievements we have been able to do in this period and what we propose to do. And I need to be very brief. First of all, the export performance in the current year from the month of April has uh, shown an upward incline. And uh, those of you who are following the trends would know that in the last four months, we have shown a positive growth. You saw in the film that the, at, uh, in rupee terms, the growth has been 14.23%. The second point I want to make is that the government right at the top, and you have heard the Honorable Prime Minister on the 15th of August, has clearly, ma uh, clearly made exports and India's capacity to play a significant role in international trade as a landmark 
of its economic governance architecture. Exports not merely as a function of marketable surplus, but export as a means of pulling up the economy. That is a significant focus that the government clearly has. Thirdly, as I said, there is a back end, and you are aware of the dialogue on manufacturing and services related reforms which is going on, and all other departments are working towards that. As far as the Department of Commerce is concerned, in the front end, the focus is now on simplification, trade facilitation, digitization, introducing e-governance, and uh, reducing transaction cost. And in this direction, several actions have been put on the track. At this point, I can give you a feel of some of that action. Something which is most visible, as you would see, how we mainstream export as a culture in our <laughs> economic activity, you can witness, if you go on the YouTube, there is a DGFT YouTube site where you will start seeing how to facilitate, how to become an exporter. And what we propose to do is to come up with a series of short films, educative films, basically intended to, to facilitate your capacity of not just becoming an exporter, but of meeting various challenges while being an exporter. And I think that is going to play, uh, this will of course go on being improved, but right now it is right there and it is being further <coughs> refurbished. The ease of doing business is an important area and uh, lately we have heard, we have read various assessments which have been done. Uh, ease of doing business, the manner in which World Bank uh, evaluates, includes uh, documents, the time taken in a transaction, and the cost of a transaction. We have looked at it, we have dissected the whole thing. We have clearly seen that the manner in which this has been done is not, is not in line with reality. So we have written to the World Bank to put its assessment into the realistic perspective, both in terms of assessment of costs required and in terms of the documentation required. We are further working on reducing the numbers of papers which an exporter or an importer would require if he wants to trade in India. A big uh, change is being proposed in the context of uh, digitizing the manner in which basic services and exports are offered. Those of you who have looked at SEZs and uh, uh, the various DGFT functions know that applications can be made, particularly in the context of DGFT, applications can be made online and they are processed online. Now what is missing is the connect between the customs system and the DGFT's system. And what we are working towards is now to put this together. Once this is done, it will be a very significant move. On the SEZ side, we have taken measures recently of introducing online applications. We are launching, <coughs> we are launching by the end of October, uh, by the end of October a module which will connect uh, this online, uh, which will provide this online application facility for all things done in SEZs. A pilot module on digitization and online processing of works related to SEZ developers and units will be launched in Santa Cruz Export Promotion Zone in Mumbai in, in some time in October. And then on the basis of the feedback, it will be expanded. So these were broad glimpses of and there are many more, I don't want to take more time. Uh, these are many, there are many more such initiatives which have been taken for simplifying the governance relating to exports. Having said that, let me now touch upon some 
the major areas where we have done some work and we propose to do much more. First of all, when you look at your uh, international uh, your, your international trade basket, you would uh, you we all know that we are a trade deficit country. Uh, much of the imports that happen are imports which are of necessary character, for example, petroleum and the like. And of course, there will be a reduction over time once we shift our focus, <coughs> as we have done already, on other means of energy. But there are several other product areas where import needs to be appraised and a culture of trying and seeing how we can encourage industry to manufacture those products and we are required reduce our dependence on imports. In order to do that, there is an institutional mechanism which has been put in place in the Department of Commerce for a periodic regular import appraisal and in, 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 in consultation with the rel uh, relevant departments to take policy measures to keep, to, to try and help the trade deficit not to go beyond the manageable limit. The new foreign trade policy would hopefully come soon. We are in the process of consultations. I don't want to preempt at this point by telling you what will be contained in that foreign trade policy, but I would like to give you a sense of the fact that this foreign trade policy would be different from the previous foreign trade policies in the sense that it will offer a long-term, stable, sustainable environment with a clear recognition that foreign trade policy needs to give a direction to the economy and should be facilitated in improving our manufacturing and services capacities. And that is what the foreign trade policy would do. I will refrain from saying more than this at this point in time. SEZ, as you have already seen in the films, is a very significant instrument of the foreign trade policy. In the last couple of years, SEZ went into some uh, <coughs> uh, stagnation and for reasons best known. Therefore, the government is extremely sincere and determined to deal with the obstacles which have come up. They are in the nature of policies. They are in the nature of the dual use of infrastructure made in the processing and non-processing areas. And they relate to many other, uh, many other aspects. We are in deep consultation with the relevant departments to try and see that soon we are able to show that we mean business as far as SEZs are concerned and give clear indications of the incentives that the government wants to give for SEZ development. Services exports is an extremely important area which in India has largely been reflected by the grand performance of the information technology services area. Now we want to expand it. We did a conclave on services last year, many of you would be familiar with. Now we are institutionalizing an annual services, international trade fair on services. The first trade fair on services will be organized in April 2015, for which our preparations have started. The whole objective is to take services to their logical capacities and strengths. India is a, one of the major services economy. What we require is a, set, a series and a set of reforms in some of the areas which are of strength to India. And therefore, we are launching that agenda very shortly. <clears throat> Domestic standards. The whole idea is to develop India's merchandise products to a level where they become, they get a seamless access into more developed markets and thereby get greater value for the Indian producer. In order to do that, <clears throat> the Department of Consumer Affairs is already 
proposing amendments in the BIS Act. <clears throat> we are very closely operating with the Department of Consumer Affairs and trying to anchor these changes which are necessary in our architecture on technical regulations. Project exports has come to acquire a very important position as a instrument of improving our export capacities of both merchandise and services. They have shown quite a impressive growth, but because of the constraints on the available resources, we have not been able to harness the potential. We are now extend, expanding these resources and thereby we will give uh, impetus to the manner in which project exports take place. We are conscious of uh, the global engagements that India is involved in. On the WTO, you are all aware, so I don't want to take more time. We know that uh, putting together an architecture of trade agreements, preferences, and a deeper, a more uh, involved uh, bilateral interaction with countries helps in creating an environment for better exports. In the context of our performance in various geographies, we have clearly identified Latin America, Africa, West Asia, Middle East, Southeast Asia, and CIS as potential areas to see how preferential trade agreements can be made with them and particularly focus on markets in China and Japan. Uh, mainstreaming of uh, exports in the government, and this is something you saw in the film also. The states are where the trading actually initiates and involving the states is relevant and necessary both for the purposes of improving the substantive part of export as well as to facilitate trade. And therefore, we are, in order to mainstream these state governments, we have requested every state and we have worked towards that to, for them to make export strategies. They are appointing export commissioners in each state on our request. And these export strategies and the institutional mechanisms will not simply look at the need for increasing exports, but all problems which arise in the states will have to be internalized in these strategies with a view to deal with those uh, obstacles in the way of exports. Uh, a similar okay. treatment is being given here to the various departments because there are, uh, as far as exports are concerned, there is a need for institutionalizing mechanisms in various relevant departments. And therefore, we are now, all departments which, are, which have a role to play in exports will have officers at the levels of joint secretaries who will be dedicated for the work of international trade. In South Asia, in Iran, our focus has been for some time and now it is being intensified. We are looking at a seamless South Asia. And towards that direction, we are working, both in terms of the need for institutional arrangements and in terms of the physical uh, interventions. I think this is all that I want to say. The, the focus is an effort to take a comprehensive and a composite approach to international trade so by thereby we can build a sustainable long-term institutional process. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, sir. I now request the Honorable Minister to make her introductory remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm more inclined to say probably I'll take questions than also make an introductory remark. I think the Secretary has effectively put forth everything that we need to say from the Department. Uh, besides, I think uh, both in Hindi and English you have the slides and a press note given both in Hindi and English. So you have enough material in your hand. Uh, 
and I, I, I suppose I won't be wrong in assuming that you have more materials in terms of questions to ask. So I shall not, uh, in addition to the secretary, make an opening remark. I'd rather leave the floor open and through the questions which you're raising, suppose address all the issues that we need to address. Uh, let's start the questions. Yeah. Your Excellency, good afternoon. My name is Alexander. I am a bureau chief of Russian news agency TASS. Earlier, uh, you know that Russia imposed ban on some products uh, from US, uh, European Union, and some other countries. Uh, do you see any prospective uh, in this sense for India? And do you have any actions plan? for Indian exporters to go into Russian market. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting, I start with the question from you. Uh, good, you're welcome. Uh, well, we'll be interested in uh, trading with Russia, but I would certainly not put it in the context of uh, the issues that you've uh, raised as uh, forming the context for us to start looking at the market in Russia. Uh, the political reality of whatever is developing there is not uh, the context in which I would like to talk about trade with Russia. Russia has been, Russia in the form of Russia and earlier as you were seen in, we've had uh, trade relations and it is a historic uh, you know, relation. So as it is, yes, we will be keen on looking at market, greater access to market in Russia, specifically for some goods and more specifically on others also. So yes not so much just for the context. That will be uh, Hello, ma'am. I'm Vijayendra from ABP. Ma'am, yes, uh, SFIU has submitted the report uh, regarding Sarada scam. What is the future course of action you are planning to take against these companies who violated these rules, companies act? Would you and mind if I first uh, deal with all the questions related to commerce and then address anything else? Is it corporate affairs related, Mr. Madam? Uh, sorry? Is the issues related Today to Today we are talking of commerce. लक्ष्मण सीएनबीसी आवाज से जैसा कि प्रधानमंत्री ने 15 अगस्त को कहा भी था कि एक्सपोर्ट को बढ़ावा देने की जरूरत है कई सारे पहलू पर उन्होंने ध्यान दिया तो जो फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी आने वाली है वो कब तक हम लॉन्च लाएंगे और उसमें क्या फोकस होगा पिछले फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी के तुलना में देखें तो मैंने सोचा सेक्रेटरी साहब ने इसका ऑलरेडी जवाब दे चुके हैं जल्दी से जल्दी आ जाएगा पॉलिसी और उसका ब्रॉड वर्णन दे सकते हैं इंटेंसिव डिटेल्स अभी देना उचित नहीं होगा मगर ये पहले से जो भी पॉलिसी ढांचा था उससे जरा हट करके होगा इंतजार कीजिए आ जाएगा मैम योगेश आपका विभाग वाणिज्य विभाग इस बार के ट्रेड फेयर में स्वदेशी उत्पादों के लिए क्या कोई विशेष आयोजन की नीति बना रहा है क्योंकि चाइना का प्रभाव है भारत में तो स्वदेशी उत्पाद जहां हमारे घट रहे हैं स्वदेशी बाजार गिर रहा है तो क्या इस बाजार को बचाने के लिए आपका विभाग इंडियन ट्रेड फेयर में किसी प्रकार की विशेष स्कीम इस बार प्रस्तुत करेगा या नहीं वेल well, सिर्फ एग्जीबिशन uh, वगैरह के लिए नहीं है मगर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर को प्रोत्साहन देने के लिए बहुत स्टेप्स ले रहे हैं मैं मानती हूँ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर का अगर प्रोत्साहन दे रहे हैं उसमें स्वदेश और चाइना जैसे देशों से बातचीत करने के समय हम ये भी बात कर रहे हैं कि सिर्फ उधर से एक्सपोर्ट ना करें इधर भी आकर के प्रोडक्शन यूनिट्स इधर लगाएं जिससे हमारी रोजगारी भी बढ़ेगी इसीलिए जितने भी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का प्रोत्साहन हो रही है वो सब स्वदेशी का ही हो रही है मैम आई फ्रॉम हांगकांग फिनिक्स टीवी एंड बिकॉज वी सी शी जिनपिंग इज कॉमिंग एंड चाइना वांट्स टू हैव द इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क इन इंडिया एंड व्हाट आर द एडवांटेजेस दैट इंडिया कैन प्रोवाइड फॉर चाइनीज कंपनी टू इन्वेस्ट हियर एंड टू अर्न द प्रॉफिट हियर What are the advantages that India can provide, like the uh, population dividends or what kind? Yeah, of absolutely. You you said you're from Taiwan. Yes. Sir. You should certainly know about uh, the way in which 
uh, trained and skilled manpower can do to a production or an industrial uh, park. India is rich with good manpower, well-trained manpower. We think particularly in activities where uh, large-scale technology-driven but labor-intensive uh, production units have to be set in. No other better place can be found in the globe today uh, than in India. So when uh, the Chinese investments are being drawn, because you specifically res refer to China, I'm refer referring to that, but any investment being drawn into India is on the merits of such uh, strengths that India has, that we are one of those well-endowed uh, economies in terms of soft skills, in terms of better environment for finding affordable labor, and uh, uh, with the intention of this current government being to emphasize on improving manufacturing sector, you can't be uh, better anywhere else in the world. And that is one of the reasons we are inviting investment into India from all over the globe, particularly with China, because we've been there at least twice within the last three months. Raymond from the Wall Street Journal. Um, Regarding the WTO, um, is there anything short of full acceptance of India's position on stockpiling that would cause India to, to agree to the ratification of the trade facilitation agreement? Regarding? Is there anything short of full acceptance of India's position on food security that would cause India to agree? Oh, no, no. To ratify? The debate is very clear on that. How many ever times we ask questions, the answers are going to be the same. We are in favor of the trade facilitation. In fact, the Secretary's presentation narrated whether we signed the WTO's uh, Bali-based uh, trade facilitation related agreement or not, we are on the process of improving uh, conditions or bettering the environment which prevails in the country on trade facilitation. Uh, and uh, therefore, with the nation's intent and interest uh, being very pro-trade facilitation, what can be any reservation that we have towards signing the uh, WTO trade facilitation aspect of the agreement. All that we are saying is, yes, we are on trade facilitation clear, we want to go ahead with the agreement, but we shall not wait for, a, uh, for an interminable period to get an agreement on what we think is important for India, and that is public holding of, stock holding of grains. That's about it. It is simple, straight narrative. Um, yes, ma'am, uh, Manish Kumar, News 24. Se. Here, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, Chinese president ka Bharat Dora hone wala hai. Kaha ja raha hai ki China yaha pe kuch bari establish karegi Gujarat, Maharashtra mein trade park ko leka economic yaha yaha pe kuch bari units laga jayenge. Kis tarikh ki visit hogi aur commerce ke liye se Bharat ke liye kitna mahatvapoorn ye visit hoga? China ka bhi aur Bharat ka bhi ye bhoti mahatvapoorn visit hai. Aap uh, pehle industrial park ke vishay zikar kiya hai. उसमें मैं डिटेल में नहीं जाऊंगी क्योंकि आखिर जब ये उच्च स्तर के विजिट होगी उस समय जो भी अनाउंसमेंट होना चाहिए उस समय वो अनाउंसमेंट्स होगा ही मगर चाइना से इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क के समझौता होने के बाद उनके टीम बहुत सारे भारत देश में दो तीन स्टेट्स में जाकर के देखे कि क्या करना है उधर कुछ एस्टेब्लिश कर पाएंगे नहीं कर पाएंगे uh, हमें लगता है कि इस विजिट के दौरान कुछ अनाउंसमेंट ऐसे होंगे जिसके तहत इंडस्ट्रियल पार्क्स एस्टेब्लिश करने में चाइना आगे बढ़ेंगे हमारे साथ uh, अब दूसरा इस विश, इस विजिट uh, का इंपॉर्टेंस के बारे में पूछ रहे थे चाइना और भारत दुनिया में सबसे बड़ा देश है और पॉपुलेशन uh, वाइज हम दोनों फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड रैंकिंग में हैं इसका महत्व आप मार्केट के रूप में अगर सोचेंगे तो समझ सकते हैं क्या मार्केट इन दोनों देश में मिलता है अगर एक प्रोड्यूसर इन मार्केट को टारगेट करना चाहते हैं इसका सिग्निफिकेंस एकदम बड़ा है इसीलिए हम भी चाइना में मार्केट एक्सेस ज्यादा मांग रहे हैं जैसे चाइना भी इधर बहुत सारे मार्केट ऑलरेडी पा चुके हैं मगर हम एम्फोसाइज कर रहे हैं अभी सिर्फ मार्केट पाना नहीं है हमारी ट्रेड बैलेंस इतना भारत के खिलाफ है तीस बिलियन डॉलर से यूएस डॉलर से ज्यादा बढ़ते जा रही है हम इसीलिए चाइना से रिक्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं कि आप भारत देश में आकर के उत्पादन निर्माण करना इधर ही करिए उधर से करके इधर भेजना 
हमें फेवरेबल नहीं लग रहा है ऊपर से इधर इन्वेस्ट करने में आपको भारत देश की रोजगारी बढ़ाने के लिए हमें मौका मिल जा मिल मिल पाएगा इसीलिए हम मानते हैं कि इस विजिट के दौरान भारत में इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए और भारत में चाइना के ट्रेड बढ़ाने के लिए और हमारे एक्सेस देने के लिए ये अच्छा सा एक मौका होगा प्रेसिडेंट जी जी पिन और हमारे भारत के प्रधानमंत्री दोनों इस विषय में बहुत इंटरेस्टेड हैं हम मानते हैं इस विजिट के विजिट के दौरान चाइना और भारत देश के आपस के संबंध जितने भी पिछले पचास साल साठ साल से हैं उसमें एक डायरेक्शनल चेंज आएगा हम उम्मीद रखते हैं कि आपस पड़ोसी देश देश होने के बावजूद हम बहुत सारे अपॉर्चुनिटी में आगे बढ़ नहीं पाए अभी तक और इस विजिट के बाद से हम लग, हमें लगता है कि बेटर डायरेक्शनल चेंज होगा जिसके द्वारा दोनों देश के आपस में संबंध अच्छा भी होगी Um, Wouldn't too. Yeah, <laughs> you knew that. Um, in the final hours before the deadline for the signing of the trade facilitation agreement, there were very hectic, almost frantic negotiations in Geneva to try to find some kind of compromise that would be acceptable to India. Of course, at the last minute, no agreement could be reached. Could you say and explain what was on offer, um, you know, from the other countries to try to sort of? Meet India's um, concerns and why um, why it fell short, and how you think the WTO process can now be revived from here. And as a follow up, I'd like to ask: You are reaching out to many countries. Um, you know, we know that some countries were irate over what happened um, in the WTO forum. Are you feeling that this is an issue that is um, in any way vitiating your? Um, You know, possible trade relations with other trading partners, or do you feel that there is actually a wide amount of sympathy for India's position? I don't think anyone is irate. Anyone is irate anymore, even if they were earlier. I think, if anything, today the environment is far in favor, far more in favor of India. People are able to understand why we took the position that we did take in July. There's a greater sense of understanding and appreciation. Uh, I would definitely put on record here that during my recent visit to China, China's um, trade minister very clearly said that he is able to see where we have come from and what arguments we have placed. Um, so that thought be removed from your mind. That people are irate. People think uh, probably we are uh, going to be isolated. on the contrary we've had now more people understanding india's position favorably to india and uh, so that's your second part of the question the first part uh, the negotiations will have to continue even now so i won't even go into saying where we fell short why they were not able to deal with us better why they couldn't offer us anything better for us to even then sign the agreement no i will not engage in that because uh, be because the first thing is uh negotiations are hopefully to continue even now we expect that in september there will be september or even in october there would be more meetings of the agricultural uh, committee we will be uh, talking with them from the point of view of india not now not just before or the eve of signing the agreement but be well before that we had given a proposal which is largely being called as the g33 based proposal but we've given a lot of alternatives probably there wasn't enough time for the wto to sit over these proposals and come back with a response then that's what i would like to believe but i certainly hope those proposals and even even uh, newer uh, suggestions that india has been offering all be taken on board and wto engage with us members of wto are we are also talking to a lot of them to explain our position i'm very hopeful i'm very hopeful let me reiterate for your sake that the wto and the members would understand india's position it is india's position for the sake of india and for many other countries who hold stock public stock of grains many which i have even mentioned in the clarification uh, session of the parliament in rajya sabha many countries are doing it i can list them out for you 
So, we hope that the member countries understand the position that, is, that India has taken, not just for India, but in the interest of many countries which have public stock holding of food grains. These are issues of sovereign right of a country. We would like WTO to address them, and I'm hopeful. We've given, we've given. Our expectation is that we get a permanent solution for the public stock holding of food grains. It is important for my national food security. And therefore, that is my expectation. I am in favor of trade facilitation, but my expectation be addressed. Well, I don't want to go on adding. I want the WTO to feel free to talk to us and engage with us to get a solution done. मैं एस एम आसिफ एडिटर इन दिनों उर्दू डेली से हमारा सवाल आपसे ये है कि भारत में बनारस मुरादाबाद और फिरोजाबाद ये वो शहर हैं जहाँ से स्पोर्ट पहले बहुत ज्यादा होता था और यहाँ पर गरीब तबके के लोग रहते हैं जिसमें मोदी जी ने भी कहा था कि इनके स्पोर्ट्स के लिए कोई नई पॉलिसी आएगी जो इनके सामान विदेशों में जाए इस पर अभी तक क्या किया हाँ आप सही कह रहे हैं बिल्कुल इन तीनों क्षेत्रों से जैसे इन तीनों क्षेत्रों से भी और ऐसे जैसे बहुत सारे भारत देश में अलग राज्यों में भी हैं उनसे बहुत ही एक्सपोर्ट होता था पहले और अभी गटकर शायद बहुत ही नीचे निचले तक आ गए हैं एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन के लिए हर राज्य में एक्सपोर्ट कमिश्नर्स का अपॉइंटमेंट करने का सुझाव प्रधानमंत्री जी से ही आया है हम इसको फॉलो करते रहेंगे और स्पेसिफिकली इन तीनों क्षेत्रों के ऊपर भी कुछ ऐसे कामकाज और ब्लूप्रिंट निकालेंगे जिससे वो तीन क्षेत्र भी एक्सपोर्ट में आगे बढ़े जैसे भारत में बाकी क्षेत्र भी आगे बढ़ना चाहिए मैम ऋतु पार्टनर फ्रॉम सी एन बी सी डिसाइड शॉर्टली प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी विल बी इन वॉशिंगटन At one point of time, you know, U.S. was our biggest trading partner, but now we are embroiled in several trade disputes. There are issues related to IPR, H-1B visa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, given the fact that uh, you know we have been major trading partners and we are strategic partners, what are the deliverables as far as trade and economy is concerned from this visit, which is, of course, one of the most important visits uh, that uh, Mr. Modi will have? Well, um, I'm not sure if it is appropriate for me to list all the deliverables right now. You'll have no interest in the visit after that. Uh, well, a lot of issues are being talked about. You're right, U.S. was one of the largest trading partners, but there are no specific reasons with which I will attach uh, as, as to why, you know, trade is falling. The international financial meltdown has upset many countries' trade relationship with several other countries. So I won't attribute specific reasons for any specific decline in uh, trade. Uh, issues of concern for India were also spoken about during the U.S.-India strategic dialogue, which was held in the context of uh, uh, Mr. Kerry's visit and also when uh, the Trade and Commerce Minister Penny Pritzker was around. Uh, those issues will also be taken up, whether it is totalization issue, whether it is the visa issue, whether it is the mode for labor movement issue. You have many such, and our pharmaceuticals uh, uh, sector would expect greater access to the U.S. market. There are several such issues um, which will be taken up before the visit uh, and uh, on some of them even during the visit. My name is Harshwardhan Tripathi, P7 News. Every time you say that the manufacturing and export of the government's priorities are very high. पिछले दस सालों में भी ए सी जेड का बहुत ज्यादा हल्ला हुआ लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा देखा गया कि वो रियल एस्टेट मार्केट की तरह मूव हुआ या जो वहां इंसेंटिव थे उसी पर ज्यादा इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट का जोर रहा लेकिन देश की डीडीपी के लिए या कहें कि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग और एक्सपोर्ट के लिए बहुत कुछ होता हुआ नहीं दिखा अब मोदी जी ये कह रहे हैं कि मेक इन इंडिया तो क्या सरकार इस बार कोशिश ये करेगी कि कुछ इस तरह के ऐलान हो जिससे सीधे सीधे जीडीपी में किस तरह से एक्सपोर्ट का योगदान होगा किस तरह से मैन्युफैक्चरिंग को हम बेहतर करेंगे उसको कुछ साफ साफ समझ में आएगा या फिर एसीजेट की तरह हम एक कहें कि मशरूमिंग हो जाएगी लेकिन हम क्लियर कट देश के कुछ बड़े एसीजेट को भी वर्ल्ड मैप पे नहीं देख पाएंगे आप सही कहा पिछले दस साल में एसीजेट के ऊपर हल्ला ही हुआ हल्ला हुआ हल्ला ही हुआ कुछ नहीं मगर हम अभी एसीजेट के ऊपर 
डेफिनेटली स्पेसिफिकली बहुत सारे इश्यूज सोच रहे हैं और उसके ऊपर सेक्रेटरी कॉमर्स और सेक्रेटरी रेवेन्यू आपस में बहुत सारे विषयों को उठा करके बात किए हैं उसमें से एक आध जो महत्वपूर्ण जो आपने जिक्र किया मैट और डीडीडी विषय और एस का ड्यूअल यूज मतलब सिर्फ एक्सपोर्टिंग यूनिट नहीं है मगर अदर मैन्युफैक्चरर्स को अभी यूज देने के लिए जिससे ऑप्टिमल यूटिलाइजेशन होगा एस के वो जमीन का उस डेवलपमेंट का और डेवलपर का भी उनका अपना रिटर्न्स जल्दी में उनको मिलने का मौका मिलेगा फिर ये भी आप सोच रहे हैं कि एस उसमें स्पेसिफिकली कुछ और विषय जोड़ रही है क्या अगर एक राज्यों का एरिया में आप सोचेंगे फिर लैंड एक्विशन एक्ट का अभी हम फिनेंस मिनिस्टर भी घोषणा कर चुके हैं कि उसमें कुछ थोड़ा एडिशनल एक्सेप्शन ले आना है तो ले आने के लिए सरकार तैयार है सो so स्पेसिफिकली बहुत है ऐसे विषय और इसमें बिकॉज आप डिटेल्स के साथ क्वेश्चन पूछे हैं मैं सेक्रेटरी साहब से भी बोलूंगी कि इफ यू वांट टू ऐड ऑन टू इट land acquisition related norms for uh, ccs i mean that's what uh, you meant no i'm saying in broad uh, issues related to better exports uh, scz is one of the tools the other would be land acquisition related issues not specific to scz we are talking about scz which have already got lands so that's a different one ma'am <coughs> 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 i just uh, do point add karna chahunga नंबर uh, एक तो एस से हमारा 25 परसेंट एक्सपोर्ट अभी भी आ रहा है तो ऐसा नहीं है एस स्टिल प्ले अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल लेकिन हुआ यह है कि पिछले कुछ सालों में उनका वो जो रोल और अच्छा प्ले कर सकते थे वो रोल प्ले करने की उनकी क्षमता में हमने पॉलिसी uh, के माध्यम से वो नहीं किया अब जो हो रहा है वो बेसिकली इस नजर से हो रहा है ये ध्यान में रखते हुए कि एस की जो इंस्ट्रूमेंटैलिटी है वो एक बड़ी अच्छी इंस्ट्रूमेंटैलिटी है जिसमें दोनों ऑब्जेक्टिव हल हो सकते हैं एक्सपोर्ट का ऑब्जेक्टिव भी है और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग को बढ़ावा देने का ऑब्जेक्टिव भी है और इसी को दृष्टिगत रखते हुए जो हम लोगों की बात हो रही है रेवेन्यू से वो इसी को दृष्टिगत रखते हुए हो रही है तो अब इससे ज्यादा अभी कहना मेरे लिए ठीक नहीं होगा लेकिन वो बातचीत जो हो रही है वो उसमें एक ग्रेजुअलिस्टिक प्लान होगा और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि अगले कुछ दिनों में हम उस पर सामने आएंगे आपके मैम सिद्धार्थ फ्रॉम टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया मैम ऑन पेज फोर ऑफ योर नोट यू हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट गवर्नमेंट विल स्ट्रेटेजाइज ग्लोबल ट्रेड एंगेजमेंट टू कंक्लूड ट्रेड पैक्ट एंड यू ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड मैंशन अबाउट न्यू अप्रोचेज टू प्रेफरेंशियल ट्रेडिंग विद लैटिन अमेरिका सी आई एस एंड अफ्रीका सो डज दैट मीन मोर प्रेफरेंशियल एग्रीमेंट्स विद दीज थ्री एरियाज एज इन लैटिन अमेरिका सी आई एस एंड अफ्रीका and to uh, are we looking at reopening some of the issues uh, related to some of the trade uh, agreements that we had uh, we are negotiating with say with eu etc a related question madam she yeah please ts and pts um is there s- on the uh, issue of ftas ftas and preferential yeah. trading agreements and all that um i think the other department you look at industrial policy has some me. has some issues i think with so uh, how do you are there a lot of conflicts coming up between industry department and commerce department on this and how do you resolve it and is that why you didn't do an industry and commerce joint press conference uh, first of all let me tell you that uh, Uh, this is nobody's case that ftas are inherently and there is something wrong with the ftas as an institutional mechanism the 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 complaints that we have heard from some elements of industry were that ftas were adversely impacting some of the manufacturing sectors we have come out with information in earlier gatherings where we have said that our trading partners of the recent four ftas have utilized the ftas to the extent of 3% to 28% as far as our utilization of these ftas is concerned we are still collecting the figures but we are confident 
that it cannot be more than what the trading partners have done. So this is clearly made out that FTAs per se have not adversely affected manufacturing as it is often made out to be. Yes, some segments of A sector can be adversely affected, but then in any trade relationship that is inherent in it. You will give, uh, get some, you will give some. Now you spoke about the, uh, the, trade, uh, the trade engagements. See, in today's time, if the WTO is not delivering, then your options are that you, in order to find preferential markets, you get into these FTAs. <clears throat> the larger uh, formations like RCEP, we are already part of it. TPP and TTIP, we do not think we can be part at this point in time. You are aware of the reasons. So clearly the choice is, if we want to diversify and if we want to intensify preferential trading to give us greater advantage, we have to look into markets which are relatively less explored. And that is what we are proposing, that Latin America, Africa, CIS, and uh, uh, South Asia, uh, your uh, West Asia, these are the markets which we should utilize either through institutional mechanisms such as PTAs and FTAs or through various sector-based cooperation mechanisms. Yeah. No, it's not a question of reopening. See, uh, you are aware that India-EU FTA negotiations had advanced to a pretty uh, uh, significant level. Now, clearly the position hasn't changed. And uh, if this agreement has to, has to conclude, then EU has to consider its position. That's what we have said. In fact, uh, let me add to that, the EU ambassador met us very recently before he was on a visit back to the uh, European Union. And he had raised the specific issue of would you want to, you know, tie up on the FTA with the EU. And I, in fact, had replied to him saying, nothing stops us from doing it, of course, but let them also come back saying whether they're interested. Because at a time when uh, plurilateral agreements are being signed, transatlantic and transpacific, you find interests of countries uh, being more focused towards these, and we would like to establish whether they are really interested in coming back to us on it. So these are happening, these are to talks which are happening in the sense of uh, we are uh, re-establishing interests. So once that is uh, clearly uh, established, we may want to go forward. So it is not as if we are holding back with a sense of reservation. It is more a question of starting, if necessary, all over again. You wanted to ask? Nima from Business Standard. Just want to understand, after this recent uh, cancellation of foreign secretary level talks between India and Pakistan, where does the trade normalization dialogue stand right now and what happens to the roadmap where commerce secretaries were supposed to meet within six months? Has all those been stalled? If you can give an update, please. Well, at the moment, there's nothing to report on. Hi, ma'am. Siddhan from the Doordarshan News. Ma'am, one question. Is India open for an FTA with China? Well, the, let the visit happen. You'll get to know more whether we're open or not. We have already, you know, in terms of access, market access, talking about greater access. We're also talking about, uh, you know, setting up industrial parks, so specific sector-wise activities are also happening. Wait for the visit. Uh, so my question to you, uh, on 11th of July, you had said at a press conference in the ministry to you, uh, uh, that uh, ahead of a possible uh, meeting between USTR and India's Commerce Minister, Deputy USTR, and you would have meetings. Uh, so has that been set up, and what is the agenda, and what's the update on that? <clears throat> yeah, the deputy USTR and I would have a meeting on the 17th this month, and uh, the whole the the yeah in Delhi, and the objective is uh, basically to prepare for the ministerial meeting. So that meeting is not going to deliver any outcome, but that essentially is to prepare for the meeting which the ministers would have later on. The ministers yeah prepare an agenda for the ministers. 
because ministers will be meeting later thereafter. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have yet to discuss. But you know the usual issues, and I'm sure there will be new issues as well. Yeah. मैम आपने गोल्ड के ऊपर इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी बढ़ा करके अपने जो इंपोर्ट बिल है उसको कंट्रोल में कर लिया सीडी कंट्रोल में आ गया लेकिन हमने देखा कि स्मगलिंग जो है वो काफी बढ़ा है तो क्या आप इसी जो भी इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी है उसको आप कंटिन्यू करेंगी या फिर स्मगलिंग जो है उसको एक सवाल ये भी कि क्या इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी बढ़ने के कारण स्मगलिंग बढ़ा है और क्या इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी हाल फिलहाल में आपको आप घटाने का विचार रखती है क्योंकि अब सीडी भी कंट्रोल में आ गया है इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी बढ़ाने के कारण ही स्मगलिंग बढ़ा ये तो मैं कह नहीं सकती हूँ सो इवन इफ यू आस्क मी अ पॉइंटेड क्वेश्चन आई एम सॉरी आई वोट बी एबल टू आंसर दैट अगर नमस्कार मैम हाँ नमस्कार मैम संतोष पाठक इनका एक जवाब बाकी है यस करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट इज कम डाउन तुरंत इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी को कम करो इसमें कुछ सोच नहीं है एट द मोमेंट कुछ है तो मैं बोलूं नमस्कार मैम संतोष पाठक समाचार प्लस से अभी आप चाइना के विजिट पे गई थी वहां पे आपका बयान भी आ गया था कि चाइना कहीं ना कहीं बुलेट ट्रेन के मामले में भारत की मदद करने को तैयार है तो क्या किस तरह से बातचीत हुई है और किस तरह से चाइना मदद करने को तैयार है और अभी चीनी राष्ट्रपति की विजिट पर क्या कुछ ठोस एग्रीमेंट इस मामले में हो सकता है बुलेट ट्रेन के मामले में बहुत सारे विषयों के ऊपर बातचीत हुई उसमें रेलवे के संबंधित बात भी हुई जो बुलेट ट्रेन का पर्टिकुलर रेफरेंस आप कर रहे हैं रेलवे संबंधित विषयों में बातचीत हुई उसमें बुलेट ट्रेन है क्या स्टेशन है क्या ये तो मैं अभी विवरण दे नहीं सकती हूं मगर बातचीत में रेलवे भी एक विषय बना और उसमें कुछ अग्रीमेंट होगा कि नहीं आप इंतजार करिए प्रेसिडेंट के विजिट के समय उससे पहले मैं बोलना उचित ना नहीं सबीना सबीना एंड द जीत फ्रॉम इन्फा मे बी अ नाइव क्वेश्चन बट आई जस्ट वांटेड टू अंडरस्टैंड वेयर डू गेट द कॉन्फिडेंस दैट चाइना वुड इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया कंसीडरिंग द फैक्ट दैट इट इज आर बिगेस्ट कॉम्पिटिटर एंड द फैक्ट दैट मेड इन चाइना हैज यू नो इज अ सक्सेस स्टोरी ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड एंड बी क्वेश्चन वुड बी made in india success story how much of time do you give ourselves to become one as well see it's not a question of having the confidence that china would want to come and invest without having substance for building up that kind of confidence confidence comes with hope and at this stage it's a blend of confidence and hope because during the discussion with the chinese we have seen interest being expressly stated that we wouldn't mind coming and investing in india otherwise this agreement on setting up industrial parks in india would not have been signed with the chinese so no we are not just sort of uh, uh, catching hold of straws in the wind and thinking that oh we have the confidence that chinese are coming here to invest no there are enough well grounded reasons for us to believe that the chinese have an interest in investing in india based on that we are inviting them to come and invest because it helps us to cut down our trade deficit hopefully it helps us to create jobs in india that's that's one of the stated objective of this government and therefore we are looking at china to come and invest particularly on products where they have already found a market in india as regards made in china uh, label i am not commenting but i am interested in made in india label and for which we'll do everything to get investments to uh, invest in uh, innovation invest in r&d and ensure that we do enough hand holding with our manufacturers so that made in india becomes a brand which you can all be all of us can be proud of and such label will find additional market you know in different parts of the country already in many sectors made in india is a matter of high equity leveraging them is also important for us because you already found uh, that india's branding itself in terms of some sectors whether it is uh, pharmaceuticals or you know it or uh, uh, automotive sectors and so on and in fact i would uh, sort of show this little piece which is being given to all of you there is a india brand uh, uh, foundation which is looking at uh, how indian branding can happen you have people here from uh, 
that foundation with whom that is a fairly independent body. They have worked with the CIA. Now the ministry is also working together with them. They are doing a lot of work about how to brand Indian, you know, in some sectors, uh, manufacturers, so that I mean they can take the cost forward. So made in India is going to be, if not more, more than made in China, at least equal and bettering on it. So you'll have a lot of good news on this. Have a look at this one also. Yeah. Ma'am, this is a Gautam from EGOV magazine. Uh, Bangladesh Foreign Minister is coming with an 18 member delegation to India very soon. Apart from raising the issues of trade and commerce, he is likely to ask for a regular coastal service between India and uh, Bangladesh. What, uh, what will be your decision and what are the you know, likely agendas that you, are, you would likely to raise with the Bangladesh Minister? Well, the details I wouldn't want to go into. I'll certainly keep it uh, reserved for the Trade Minister. But the Prime Minister has very clearly shown indication that the neighborhood relations are of great priority. And relationships are built not just over a cup of tea, talking, but also in engaging with trade and other matters with them. So that's exactly what I would like to do with Bangladesh, uh, hopefully improve on trade relationship with them. You'll get the answers then. Yeah. Ma'am, I have one question related to corporate affairs. No. As you are aware, the SFIO... You may ask, but I may not be able to answer today. Okay, my, my job is to ask you the question. The SFIO has given a report to the Corporate Affairs Ministry. How soon will any action be taken, if at all? A related question to this is the fact SFIO that... SFIO has given a report to the Corporate Affairs Ministry on what? On the Sardha scam. On the Sardha scam. Sardha scam. All right. Mm. And uh, there is a related issue. Uh, there are several such jet fund companies that are still operating. Of course, there are several regulations that have been put in place. What further regulatory, regulatory action are you looking at? And also, a lot of these jet fund companies are operating with political patronage. So what action can your ministry be taking? And what action has been taken so far? I will find a time to call you and give you the answers. But today is commerce, and I'll stick to that. Yeah. Manoj Kumar from Reuters News Agency. How, uh, how much we are you or the Prime Minister Modi is concerned about the wide trade deficit we have with China? And to what extent you think that, that uh, foreign investment by Chinese companies could meet this deficit? Well, uh, the trade deficit with China is definitely worrying. There's no way in which I can uh, underplay that. And all the effort that the department is taking and also all the effort with which we are going forward to negotiate with the Chinese as regards greater market access is done because we want to improve our export performance. And uh, uh, particularly in the context of labor becoming more expensive and Indian manufacturers therefore probably will have a greater price competitiveness. Um, Again, the demographic dividend that India has as opposed to the demographic contours of China uh, is more in favor of us because China's population is aging. The Indian dividend that we have in demography is going to help us to take projects over to China. You have a youthful, young population which can service in many areas where Chinese don't have enough such young population to attend to them. So these are ways in which we are accessing the, uh, or trying to access the Chinese market, whereby eventually we hope to have the trade deficit come down. Yeah, please. What, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Please, please ask your question. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you uh, have an ambitious uh, target as far as exports, uh, I mean, you know, is concerned. But it's an open secret that, you know, many of our trade missions abroad are. Uh, uh, you know, short stopped. If you look at it in comparison with the targets that you have, I mean, have you made an assessment and what are you going to do about it? Uh, uh, you know, uh, filling them with experts and stuff like that. Just want to know. Yeah, that's a concern, but we will definitely address it. We are not going to be talking about trade targets without looking at other, uh, you know, issues which are necessary to. Uh, enable this whole uh, effort to reach the target. So, yes, uh, offices abroad are issues which we are looking into. Yeah. That my, gentleman there. Uh, yeah. My name is Sridhar from Andhra Bhumi. My question is, you have promised to set up Chilli Port and uh, Karpnik Port Andhra Pradesh. When you are going to take a finalization, and what will be your contribution from Commerce Ministry 
to the newly created Andhra Pradesh. No, 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 just one minute. What was your first question? The Childish Board and the Tarburic Board in Andhra Pradesh. You have promised to set up long back. Sorry. Say that again. Terminic board. Chilli board and uh, turmeric board. And what oh, will be your right. contribution to the newly created Andhra Pradesh state from the Commerce Ministry? What is our contribution from the Commerce Ministry? Some institutions like that, Indian Foreign Trade Institute. Of like course, that. Commerce Ministry contributes to every uh, state, sir. We will contribute just as the states contribute to themselves. We are all working together. Nobody <coughs> cont contributes one to the other like that. Everyone contributes to. Commerce Ministry will actively engage with the state of Andhra Pradesh as, which, as much as it will engage with Telangana in, in order to make sure that Commerce Ministry's role in the two newly created states is adequately met and serviced. So we are ready. The moment we get proposals, we'll start working on them and service them from our end. So we'll also encourage, in fact, uh, invite the states to uh, approach the ministry with proposals which they can send us on specific engagements that they want us to engage in. So we will look forward, in fact, invite the states to send us the proposals with which we can speed up our response. Yeah, please ask. Ma'am, I'm Alok Priyadarshi, from Z Media. Ma'am, I'm going to tell you that the essential commodities are also bad monsoon and the festive season is going to come. तो ऐसे में एसेंशियल कमोडिटीज और खासतौर से अनियन को लेकर क्या सतर्कता बरती जा रही है मिनिस्ट्री की तरफ से क्योंकि एक बार फिर एमएपी पांच डॉलर से बढ़ाकर फिर कम कर दिया गया था आने वाले दिनों में क्या स्ट्रेटजी है खासतौर से एसेंशियल कमोडिटीज और अनियन को लेकर नहीं एसेंशियल कमोडिटी और ऑनियन को लेकर के सिर्फ अभी नहीं जब से ये नया सरकार आए हैं आप देख रहे हैं कि हर सप्ताह इसके ऊपर कुछ ना कुछ रिस्पॉन्स आ रही है जिसके कारण आज प्याज के प्राइसेस में टेंशन दबाव नहीं है सो एक्चुअली द प्राइस ऑफ अनियन इज वेरी वेल कंटेन्ड इन द अफोर्डेबल लेवल एंड दैट इज प्योरली बिकॉज दिस गवर्नमेंट हैज कैप्ट अप सतर्कता इट इज बीन अलर्ट वी विल कंटिन्यू टू रिमेन अलर्ट मैडम जेंटलमैन मैडम आई एम संदीप फ्रॉम मातृभूमि न्यूज चैनल I just want to know, know your policy on rubber bond from foreign countries, because there is a strong demand from farmers that to control the rubber rubber bond. Uh, rubber there, is a, there is a strong demand from farmer organisation. Huh? For to, what? To control the rubber import from foreign rubber countries. Rubber import. Uh -huh. Let me start by saying, on rubber and rubber-related issues, even the Chief Minister of Kerala came and met us. Besides this, you had rubber growers delegate delegation, rubber importers delegation. On rubber, I guess most of the stakeholders have met us. As is with many sectors, I'm not saying just about rubber. As is with many sectors, divergent opinions are emerging. Some want import, some don't want import, some want expensive import, some want cheap import, some want no import at all. So opinions are emerging. And in this context, I would like to inform um, all of you all here that the ministry has made it a point on several issues, not just on rubber, whether it is marble, whether it is tea, whether it is coffee. We are interested in finding what ails the sectors from performing better. Rubber also the issue is we want an understanding of people who are related to rubber in the ground. If small rubber growers don't want import because that really slashes the price down, there are those who say there's not enough rubber grown in this country, we want import. And after the import comes in, they use it for their own purposes and sometimes there are also allegations that that unutilized portion of import is getting flushed into the market, thereby cutting down the price. We have got the details from everybody. We'll certainly have a stakeholders meeting in Kerala to meet with all those who are concerned about rubber and rubber-related matters. Let it come out in the open. Let everybody know. And we'll, after that, we'll also, after that, talk about the rubber policy, and then take a call. That is going to be the approach also on tea. 
you've had quite a few tea gardens getting shut in North Bengal. You have Assam teas telling us, sorry, we are not benefiting at all from a tea board. We've announced a date for holding a stakeholders meeting for tea, but because of the by-election, we had to postpone it. I think now we've uh, probably fixed it for the 17th or 18th of this month. I'll announce the date uh, at the moment. I'm, I may not be remembering the date uh, off the cuff. So we will invite everyone who's concerned with that sector. Grower, worker, exporter, trader, people's representatives, MLAs, local corporators, or even members of parliament to be all there to tell us what is ailing that industry. And after which we'll take a call on rubber or tea or coffee. We'll hold it in Karnataka for coffee. A lot of delegations have met me there. Arika Nut. So the broad answer in the excuse of giving an answer to rubber is on all these matters, on all these commodities, we shall be having stakeholder meeting. We had it for Marvel very recently. And of course not uh, connected so much with the commerce, but because that's also a commodity which worries us, opium cultivation. We've had discussions with all the stakeholders. So yes, rubber, we'll have a stakeholders meeting and after that you'll get an answer. Uh, hello, yeah. ma'am. Uh, this is Ashwini, uh, Saffron Media. Uh, my question is, uh, how is your ministry is looking into increasing India's food trade, one, and expanding uh, the role of uh, APIDA and MP, uh, MPDA? Secretary, you want to say food, fruit trade? Or did I hear it as fruit or food? Yes. Food trade and role of APIDA. <clears throat> Well, first of all, as you would be, know, you would be knowing, we have done uh, remarkably well in our agriculture exports last year. As far as marine exports is concerned, I think the trend continues. And uh, if I remember correctly, the, uh, the growth during <clears throat> April to August uh, has been about 32% on marine exports. In exp so clearly, uh, that is one sector which is doing well. That is not to say that there are not some issues there. There are issues, and we are sorting them out. As far as the rest of the agriculture exports are concerned, uh, this is largely the function of domestic production, the sanitary, phytosanitary environment of the destination markets, and, in the, industry's own, and the agriculture industry's own capacity to respond to them. Now, you are aware that uh, some months ago there was a problem in Europe, and consequently, when it comes to exporting fruits and vegetables, we have now made it mandated that only from pack houses these products will go. <clears throat> Clearly, to begin with, there will be some relative decline in exports, but it will pick up. Our focus is to improve the processing environment so that the market realization from superior markets is greater. Yeah, Amiti. Uh, Ma'am, I'm Amiti from Business Line. Ma'am, the proposal to uh, impose anti-dumping duties on uh, solar cells and modules, it was not followed up by a uh, notification by the Finance Ministry after the requisite three months period. So does it mean that there won't be anti-dumping duties on those products? And if yes, uh, does the matter rest there as far as the Commerce Ministry is concerned? I suppose, yeah. That's the last question. Ma'am, this is Malleshwar from Andhra Jyoti. There is a long pending demand to establish a chilies, chilies board in uh, Guntur and uh, you know, turmeric board in Nijamabad. So many MPs have also met you and uh, you know, they have also requested you. So what is your response to it? It was asked even in the previous question for which I have not given any specific answer. The reason is because I have no specific answer for it. Yeah. 